Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and it is finally time to give you guys a little bit of an update about the dyno run on the Bad Wolf Turbo drive-by-wire setup that we have here. Let you guys know what happened at the dyno, where we're at now, and what's next. So, stay tuned for it, you won't want to miss it. All right, so holy moly, it has been a little while since I brought the car to the dyno, and I've been driving it around. It's been really excellent to drive, and I'm kind of ironing out all of the kind of regular driving behaviors that you need to get ironed out with a brand new EFI setup. Now, I have received a ton of questions about the dyno, what was the power figure? What happened? Why haven't you given an update? Has the car exploded? Is it running poorly? You know, tons and tons of speculation. And I am finally here to put some of those things to rest, to give you guys an update and let you know what's going on. Now, I have nearly 280 gigs worth of dyno footage that I have been sitting on and I've been trying to figure out how to present this information to you guys. So, before we get into that footage and before I show you the awesome dyno runs that we've had, let me give you a little update about where the car is and what's going on with it. All right, so it has been a little while since we have looked at this engine in terms of getting it assembled, getting the wiring done, and a lot of things have changed, but also kind of nothing has changed. Since we last spoke, I have gotten a few little kind of like teething pains out of the way, and that's some of the stuff that we ran into at the dyno, which I'll get into in just a minute but we did add some heat shielding and heat proofing up here on the hood. Um, that is the result of seeing the heat that this engine produces when under heavy load, like on the dyno. Um, I got some pretty cool footage to show you guys around that. Um, and then kind of working through any small leaks that popped up. I did have a thermostat leak over here. Um, I had a small fuel leak in the back of the car in the um, trunk, and I think, that's pretty much the teething issues we ran into. At the dyno, we also started to experience some issues where it was popping out of fourth gear, but I'll cover that when I show you guys the footage. But what I am really excited to share is that the engine is running spectacularly. It is really, really just operating and running exactly how I hoped. Um, the drive-by wire is performing excellently. I think the injectors we have in there are the right size, so they're operating in a really nice way. And at this point in time, I am driving my car really regularly and ironing out all of the more driving and regular setup tune items. Um, those are things like transient throttle, injector angle, um, things like idle, cold start. All of those things are coming as we are actually getting it out on the road and road tuning this. So the dyno in terms of my options here in the US is more about getting those power runs and getting that kind of full power and peak power um, understanding and getting that set up safely. Once we're there, all of the rest comes with actual usage and just getting the car comfortable and driving properly on the road. So I do want to announce that I am going to be carrying a version of that base map on my store once we get it ironed out and I'm comfortable with how it you know, operates and it's something that I'm comfortable sharing with everybody else. That's gonna come with a drive-by-wire kind of base setting in terms of your throttle curve. It will have a lot of the boost controller and, and base map things that you would want to kind of get your car running if you're gonna be running something like this. But it's not going to be a fully featured map. It's, that's not something that I have any interest in kind of producing or selling. I wanna give you guys something that you can get set up and started on your engine, but every tune and every A-series engine really needs to be set up on a rolling road or a dyno by someone who is licensed and can do that in a really safe and effective environment. My base maps are really about helping you get your DIY projects off the ground and to the dyno to get that final step set up. But it's going to give a huge foundation for you to get set up on, and I'm really excited to be sharing that with you guys. Um, there is a link to that in my description. Um, it is available for pre-order right now. 
when you purchase it right now. You won't be given a link or anything at the moment. So if it's something that you want to purchase and use for your car or you know use parts of it for your car, um, you can pre-order that today and you will be sent a download link as soon as it's available. Now, getting into the footage at the dyno. This is the part that I can't wait to share with you guys. Um, so let's just get into it. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of voiceover, but we're just gonna tackle that footage and just go through all of the different stuff we went through and get into the fun noises, the turbo noises, blow off, and some really, really wild experiences. Cause we did get the car up to 21 PSI on the dyno. So for my dyno tuning this round, I brought the car over to a wonderful shop called J-Speed Tuning. These guys are awesome. They were willing to basically let me bring the car there and work on it for the majority of the day. I mean, they spent hours on this doing tons of pulls and they were super awesome. They let me tinker on the car, work through issues and really just kind of like get in and make sure things weren't falling apart while they helped me get the base map and a really good uh, tune set up. But anyways, to get started here, we're just running a few slow speed runs. This is going to get the car up to temperature and also just get him a good idea of how the car's running, um, the areas that he's going to need to work on, and the any questions that he might have for me in relation to the build, um, and the fueling system, anything like that. So working through all of those at the moment, he'll also notice that he took off his shoes to work on the car, or rather to drive the car just like I do. We got big feet and those pedals are quite small. Now it's funny, in the US, minis always attract a crowd, um, and that is even the same case here, even at the dyno. Um, people who were visiting, people who were dropping off their cars all wanted to come and talk about the car, just see what was happening, what we were working on. Um, in this scene here, where I mean, we're kind of getting through some of the teething pains, things that were loose, things that were kind of burning off, um, and just making sure everything was operational before we do any huge power runs. Once that's out of the way though, it is time to do some true power runs and start getting into some boost. So you'll hear him be a little bit excited here. We were struggling to get some good readings from his dyno um, in terms of RPM uh, and matching that up to vehicle speed. Um, the sensor was just misbehaving in relation to my car and getting that good RPM signal. Um, though once we got that ironed out, we were able to start doing more power runs, but then we started to run into some other teething issues around the engine popping out of fourth gear, um, which is going to limit us in our ability to get a full power run in a one to one gear ratio. Now the engine popping out of fourth gear is mostly down to the orientation of my engine in terms of how much it's leaned back and just where my shifter was positioned. I was able to get that solved after getting the car back home, but you'll see me here in this scene. We also had a few issues with the connectors and pins on my drive-by wire connector. Um, I ended up ordering a pretty cheap connector and I paid the consequences here with having a few throttle uh, errors. Nothing that we weren't able to work around, but we were able to isolate that as an issue. Now these last two runs are the ones you guys have probably been waiting for. They are my higher boost runs. That's around 19 to 21 PSI. This was in third gear, not in fourth gear. So we didn't get a full power figure from this, nor did we get to fully map out all of the timing. Though I'm gonna recap a little bit of that after you guys get to enjoy these two runs. Um, also make sure you take a look at the exhaust headers because they got red hot.
right, so that is a quick synopsis of how things went at the dyno. And I'm sure you guys are wondering, because I didn't mention in any of that voiceover, uh, what the power figure was and where we're at now with the engine. And I can give you guys a little teaser of the power, but as I said, we didn't get a full power run in fourth gear, where I like to do my power runs to get that full figure with a one to one gear ratio. But in third gear, when we were making some of those high boost pulls, and this is with a fair bit of safe timing still available to us, we were able to hit about 165 horsepower and about 180 foot-pounds of torque. That was at just at 4,600 RPM. And again, that was in third gear. So I am very confident that the engine will produce over 200 horsepower once we get the timing kind of kicked up a little bit and I bring it back to the dyno now that it's happy and sitting in fourth gear the way it should. I'm really happy with those numbers, and I'm very confident that I'll be able to get over that 200 horsepower mark, which is really my goal. Um, that previous engine build with the cable throttle and the GT17, um, that produced well over 200, or I should say just over 200. It was around 210 horsepower and similar torque. Um, but what's cool about this GBC Turbo is that it spools so much faster. I can't express to you guys enough how much faster this GBC Turbo spools than the GT17. Um, again, I am running the GBC20 on this car, um, which is about the same size as the GT17 was in that previous generation of Garrett Turbos. So the impeller setup and the whole housing is just built a little bit differently than the GT17, but we were seeing tangible, usable boost down like at 2100 RPM, 2500 RPM, we were starting to get into that boost and that boost was becoming available to us in a way that actually makes the car faster and drivable down low, um, which is really cool. You know, one of the downsides of turbos in general can be how much lag there is to get to that power band and to get to that point, um, which is why superchargers in many cases are so popular because you get that really linear torque curve, that really linear power curve, and you get that kind of early on um, because of the way that superchargers work with the you know, pulley system. But this turbo is providing me what feels a lot like the best of both worlds. I get the much more efficient setup of a turbo. Um, you get a lot of really cool noises, which is always a plus, and I'm getting that boost down low. Now, I am going to be adjusting the boost by gear. I'm going to be doing all sorts of really cool stuff, which I will release updates to my base map over some time. Um, the base map, the first version, will be mostly just focusing on the drive-by-wire, a really generic timing table and fueling table that kind of suits the A-Series engine. That way you guys can get your cars running. And then for those of you who purchase that map, you will get free updates for life. So you will get things like the boost map once I get boost by gear all configured. You'll get more of the transient fuel updates as I make those over time. All of those things are gonna to continue to come to you guys in the form of software updates should you guys want to incorporate or import those into your existing maps down the road. So I'm really pleased with that. I don't know about how you guys feel. At the end of the day, it's my car. I'm really happy with it. And it's just driving so well. I'm really like starting to enjoy it again. And I know a lot of you want me to do kind of driving videos. And I can't say that that's like totally what I enjoy filming and enjoy making, but I will make an effort to make at least maybe one or two videos for you guys once I get the rest of the stuff dialed in the way that I like it. And I can make something that's pretty exciting. So if there are any other questions that you guys have about the dyno run, about where the engine build is at, the base map, why the exhaust system was red hot in the video, um, anything like that, post those in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer as much of them as I can. And uh, you know, that's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate you guys sticking with me for this update. And uh, until I see you guys on the next one, you know the drill. Enjoy those minis and motor on. See y'all.